Mark, welcome on our show. Thank you, thank you for having me. Appreciate yes, it. you're welcome. Um, tell me, you know, we usually ask our guests uh, what they wanted to be when they were a little boy, a little uh, kid when they wanted to grow up. What was it with you? Uh, I think I wanted to be a little bit of everything. I wanted to be an astronaut one day, it was a fireman, a doctor. And so my parents like said, well, what do you enjoy doing? And I found I had an inclination for math. Okay. And that kind of helped me inform me on what, what I might want to do in the future. Yeah. So, and, and did you go to college and, uh, and like pursue that? Uh... Yeah, I, I ended up meeting actually, someone came to speak to at, at our school once. So his name was uh, Mr. Madison. Okay. And he was an electrical engineer. And I had never really heard of an uh, electrical engineer. He talked about how he used math to solve problems and okay. how that is like a basis for a lot of different building opportunities and it just seemed the ideal being able to build something from nothing mm -hmm. appealed to me so when I went to college I studied electrical engineering. Okay yeah. Yeah. and did you ever uh, um, wind up working uh, in that line of work? Yeah, I ended up going to different internships while I was in college mm -hmm. and I ended up also working when I first came out of school up in Silicon Valley you know the home for all the computer companies. And Silicon I, Valley, yeah, wow. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I worked in you know, in the middle of all the engineers, and that, that's what I did for my first year or two out of college. Okay. Yeah. And uh, and after that, how did, I mean, you know, being an electrical engineer, mm -hmm. and then winding up being uh, like a producer of uh, events yeah, and big, shows. Big, big jump. Huh? Yeah, so <laughs> guide us. How did you get well, there? That's one of the things that I think growing up, always wanting to do different things and always wanting to try out new things. Yes. I, I think there, even though engineering was something that I, I wanted to pursue, I always like the idea of building something from nothing, and I always okay. like the idea of kind of t having a dream and being able to make it come true. Okay, so, that's also building from yeah, from yeah, nothing to something. Uh, yes, <laughs> and and, in, and while I was in college, I also kind of ran a comedy night, okay. and I, and I would go and I really enjoyed the idea of making having people laugh and have a great time. Yes, and and the organization that it takes to make people really enjoy the moment. You know, I noticed different things, places that you went, and if the sound wasn't right. And if the mood wasn't right, then you couldn't really enjoy it as much. And there so, the, uh, and the, the engineering came in handy. That, that's where the fire started. So, you know, uh -huh. I was really um, impressed by uh, people that I had met that were in the business because you a lot of times you think entertainment and you think it's somebody, everybody's doing the show. But there's also all these different areas behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And that's where I feel comfortable. And it just so happens, you know, my brother was also a comedian and he was up and coming at the time. Yes, your brother is yeah. in that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he started he started doing shows and asking me to come and help him do the shows. With the engineering yeah, and the sound yeah. or Well, just, just organizing totally. And we didn't really know what we were doing, but we learned from people the best. So okay. I, I would always ask questions, and I say that to any kids that are out there: is that you see something you love, find people that do it, and ask questions. Yes. Because you don't you don't have to know everything off the bat, you, but there is someone that knows. Yeah, you, know, you have to get that information. You have to make and nowadays, the kids, uh, you know, they love YouTube and they love to go to uh, the how tos. Yes. You know, yes, yes. so uh, that's it what they use difference. now. And you, you have it wide open now. You can find out about anything you want to do. Yes. Yeah. You just have to take your pick now. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and you get all the best because mm -hmm. they're all on YouTube. YouTube and Skype, you know. Yes, yes. yes yeah. So, um, if you look at your career, you know, in the past uh, years, is this the only thing you do, like the Soul Beach or well, my, other? Well, it really, the, my entertainment company, which is ML Management, and that's a separate company from Soul Beach, and, mm -hmm. and the majority of my experience was working with young talent that was coming up, and yes. then helping them to get from not just doing stand-up comedy, but to doing TV shows and films. Okay. So I produced a television show for Comedy Central for a while, okay. which which showcased some of the best urban comedians coming up. We had everybody from Dave Chappelle on it to uh, Mark Mike Epps was on it. Of course, Sinbad was on it. Damon Wayans. Uh, These were when they yeah, were all just coming names. up. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. and. Uh, it was a it was a weekly show that we shot out of a comic club that I co-owned in Chicago called mm -hmm. All Jokes Aside. Okay. And then from that, I ended up starting to do HBO specials and producing those with Sinbad. And we did five different stand-up specials, another four music specials, wow. where you had to do organize everything from how you were going to ship in all the equipment to the sound and lighting and to you know how do you get the people to come down yes. and, and and make the event so that it. Well, well, how yeah. do you get the people to come though? I mean, R. <laughs> Kelly, LL Cool J. Yes, yes, yes. Well, you know, 
relationships. I think I think the good thing is that by being in the management company and being with entertainment growing up, yes. I, all the people that were starting out and the managers that were around me at the time, mm -hmm. they had young clients too. And we became friends and we would share stories and share information and resources on how to produce. Okay. Now those guys are managing people like R. Kelly, they're managing people like Beyonce. Those people have grown up now in the business and they're friends. Yes. So I think networking is the other key, you mm -hmm. know, for me that I that I learned as an engineer, I was very much off in, in designing. Yes. And kind of a lot of that would be alone. But I learned that even it, no matter what you do, there's always resources that can help you become better. You yes. know? Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. So if you look at all the people you've worked with, uh, have you noticed any common traits, common skills that they have that yeah. you say, well, those skills are coming very handy if you want to have a successful career at anything you do. I, th I think the, the belief, the, the ideal that you really can go for anything no matter what age you are. Mm -hmm. uh, I look at the, one of my clients, I started working with him when he was 15. Okay. He decided he was going to write comedy, he was going to write movies at an early age and so he didn't say I have to wait until later no. he started now and, and and by starting then I think he progressed a lot quicker because he didn't have the fear and he didn't have people telling him no he just he just believed that if I really want to do a movie I should sit down and write it so, oh, so, so he it just starts decided with acting. and he started so he started mm -hmm. with acting and then then he said okay well I need to go to get resources whether I go to the internet or whether I go and buy books on this but there okay. were resources on how do I write yes. you know how do I what's the arc of a story what does it mean to put mm -hmm. together a good script and he used all the all those resources and for me it was the same way in management that I you know I went to places where I could read books and find out you know how have successful careers been made okay. you know what did they do because there's you know there's a formula for everything yeah you know in life you know and you you just gotta that's the consistency I think you just have to continuously believe that you can accomplish whatever you want to accomplish and if and you don't know it you get the knowledge you will you wherever will. you can and you get hit a roadblock for a while you know you take on that roadblock and say okay I'm stuck here for a little while but I'm gonna get past it and okay. you know you know you can get past it so why did you guys uh, pick Aruba, you know, for the past like 23 years already to produce uh, Soul Beach? When we started, you know, the first time we were introduced to Aruba was with uh, when we did the Sinbad Festival here, like in 1997, 98. Yeah. So after working here and, and really seeing how all, everybody was very helpful with the logistics. We made some really good friends here, mm -hmm. you know, that, that became part of our team, kind of our family. So when we went back and started our own festival with Soul Beach that was supposed to stay in one place, the other one moved around. Okay. This one was supposed to stay in one place. Aruba was our first choice, you know, outside of the U.S. to do a to do an event like that. And okay. I think the people that the people that uh, welcomed us when we first came, yeah. the way that we got the support from the government to do it, the way that. Uh, and people when they came and enjoyed Aruba, they had such a good time. Oh, I great. mean, you know, you want a place where they're going to come back year after year. Yeah. And so far, we keep adding people. So it, it oh, shows nice. and really speaks to how special Aruba is that, you know, no matter how many times they've come to Aruba, they always feel like they haven't gotten enough. So, oh, great. And what kind of advice would you give the youngsters, uh, you know, who are still looking to find their way in, the, in this world? Well, I mean, what's important is that you never give up on your dreams. And whatever you believe, you can achieve it. I mean, you've got to start off with the idea that, you know, all of these goals that you have, even if people tell you you can't do it, if they tell you that, you know, no, you're, you're, you're too young, you're not smart enough, you don't have the resources, that's, you can't believe any of that. You have to be able to go beyond that and see yourself and visualize what you want to be. You know, when, you, when, when we go out to do movies, we start off with something called a storyboard. And that storyboard is how we went from beginning to end to see the movie. You write it down, we have illustrators, pictures of everything you want to be. So when you think about your life, think of it like a storyboard. Find magazines where you see pictures of things that you want to do. Put those on your mirror. You find people that speak to you and talk to you on the internet and, and, and little tapes about what you want to do. And put those and store those on your hard drive, store those in your computer. Play those back to each other. Play those back to yourself so that you can remind yourself that you are going to achieve your dream. And the resources are always there. But what you always have to remember is that it doesn't just come to you. You have to go get the education. You have to go get the knowledge. And these days, there's no excuse. The internet connects everybody around the world. 
there is no excuse for not being able to go out and, and fulfilling the dreams that you have and learning about the dreams and become the best. The last thing I say is become the best. Don't, don't settle for being okay at anything. If you really believe in it, say, I'm gonna work so hard that people are gonna say, I don't believe that this person knows it as well as they do. And I don't care how young you are, you can be the best at what you do. If you just keep working, it's repetition. Whether, even if you have a problem, and sometimes with me, it was always communication. I was good at math, but I hated speaking in front of people. But I learned that you know the only way to confront it is to get in front of your fears and go for it. Believe in yourself and you'll get past anything. But be the best, do what you have to do to get the knowledge, and make sure that you never stop following your dreams. It's achievable. Wow, wow, you should be a motivational speaker. I, I believe because, you know, <laughs> yeah. I'm just a product of a little kid from a small city that, you know, everybody around them said you'll never go to Hollywood, you'll never be oh, able yeah, to, to you achieve. And you, and, you know, they think you're crazy when you when you have big dreams. Yes. Or people that are not necessarily that they're, that they're jealous, it's, it's that they fear they, that. They can't even mm -hmm. imagine yeah. it. Yeah. So That's you have to thing. look beyond and find people that have done it and people that have believed and, and emulate that. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, Mark, thank, thank you, you so much for your for this interview you. and for the great advice that you gave. Appreciate that. And thank I hope you. Uh, um, you will continue with Soul Beach for a lot more years. And I have a special request. Okay. I want Keith Sweat. <laughs> you know. Can you bring him, please? I, I can't deny you. You know, well, you're doing such a good job here. Thank I really you. love this program. I think it's it's very important, and I think you're going to reach a lot of kids and yeah. a lot of a lot of lives over, over the years. So I hope so. Keep That's what we uh, set out to do. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. And remember, TV Teach, Wak Pobusina. Wak Pobusina. Close. TV Teach, Wak Pobusina. Tiki Tiki, Wak Pobusinha!